the worst stealth fighter. This is how some describe Russia's Su-57 felon. But for some, they say that this beast of a fighter can fight toe-to-toe, -to -toe, or shall we say wing-to-wing, -wing, with the F-22 Raptor. But what can this fighter really do? Why do some people call it the worst stealth fighter? Why wasn't it seen in the war in Ukraine? Is it really a formidable fighter or is it just another propaganda of Russia? Let's see in this video. December 24, 2019. Zemgi Airport, Eastern Russia. This Su-57 felon with the designation Blue-01 flew to the skies in order to test its engines. However, while it was flying at 9,000 meters, suddenly, Blue-01 began to spiral down uncontrollably. At 8,000 meters, the pilot attempted to regain manual control, but to no avail, this huge plane plummeted even more. The pilot did not give up and continued to attempt to stabilize the plane, but at 2,000 meters from the ground, the pilot had no choice but to abandon his plane and use the ejection seat. Luckily, the pilot was able to safely eject himself from the plane and was immediately rescued. This incident was just one of the two publicly reported crashes that the serial production Su-57 felon suffered. Sukhoi Su-57 was developed by Sukhoi and built by Komsomols on a more aircraft plant. Its designation in Russia is T-50. This is Russia's first fighter designed with stealth technology. It is a twin-engine, stealth multi-role fighter aircraft. Specifications For size reference, here is the F-35B Length 20.1 meters Wingspan 14.1 meters Height 4.6 meters It has an empty weight of 18,000 kilograms and a maximum takeoff weight of 35,000 kilograms The power plants of Su-57 are two Saturn AL-41 F-1 after burning turbo fan with 32,000 pounds of force of thrust with afterburner. These engines are closely related to the engines used in Su-35s. However, India had seriously doubted the reliability of the AL-41 F1, as one of the Su-57s experienced a compressor stall during a show in Moscow in 2011, and another one was damaged because of an engine fire after its landing in 2014. This is one of the reasons why some people regard it as the worst stealth fighter. Even some call it a junk fighter because of its engine, saying that it's just an upgraded Su-35 with stealth capabilities. Nonetheless, these engines allow the Su-57 to fly up to a maximum speed of Mach 2 and can supercruise at Mach 1.6. Its service ceiling is 20,000 meters, gill limit is 9G+, and range is 3,500 kilometers, which can be extended to 4,500 kilometers if two outboard fuel tanks are equipped. Design It cannot be denied that this fighter looks really cool, especially in its front view. Look at this beast. It is so massive. Its overall design, of course, is heavily dictated by its stealthiness. It has a wide blended wing body fuselage with two widely positioned engines. However, these engines are so exposed affecting the overall stealthiness of the plane. This setup is very different from the F-22's engine setup as they are hidden. And the engines also have wedge nozzles, reducing its radar signature even more. This only means that the Su-57 is only frontally stealthy. Its overall radar cross-section is 0.5 square meters, compared to the F-35 which has 0.0015 square meters of RCS. This is the second reason why some people regard it as the worst stealth fighter, as it's not really that stealthy at all. To solve this issue, they plan to install future Su-57s, Variant Su-57M with a new engine Saturn SDLA-30 which is expected to produce a maximum thrust of 38,600 pounds of force. This engine has serrated nozzles just like the F-35's engine 
which reduces the radar and heat signature of the exhaust, making it stealthy. To improve its stealthiness, weapons are carried internally in weapons base and its body is coated with radar absorbent materials which absorb radar emissions and reduce the reflection back to the source. Maneuverability To increase its maneuverability, the engines of the Su-57 have thrust vectoring. Thrust vectoring is the ability of a plane to control the direction of its engine's thrust by swiveling the nozzles. These engines can vector in one plane only, but since they can vector differentially, this enables the aircraft to produce thrust vectoring moments about all three aircraft axes, pitch, yaw, and roll. Because of this thrust vectoring, combined with the aircraft's static instability, it is able to perform high angles of attack maneuvers like the famous Cobra maneuver. This is what makes the Su-57 called to be more highly maneuverable than the F-22. Cockpit It has a glass cockpit that has two 15-inch and one smaller multifunctional displays. There are no analog gauges. Common parts are also present here like the wide head-up display, ejection seat, and control stick. And this canopy is coated with thick metal oxide to reduce the plane's overall radar signature. Its augmented reality helmet was still under testing phase in 2021. It is said to be the same as the joint helmet queuing system of the F-35s where the pilot can target enemies by just facing the helmet to the enemy's direction. Avionics At the time of the creation of this video, it is not yet clear whether the sensor fusion of the Su-57 is already operational. Nonetheless, this sensor fusion just like the F-35 sensor fusion, would increase the pilot's situational awareness and reduce the pilot's workload. The sensor fusion has fusion engine and what this does is automatically assign tasks to the plane's sensors, integrate them together, and present them to the pilot as one tactical data. In other words, the pilot no longer has to manipulate the sensors in order to function. The fusion engine, which is an AI, does this automatically. What the pilot needs to do is to focus on accomplishing its mission. There are two main systems that are integrated or fused. The first main system is the multifunctional integrated radio electronic system which consists of the Bielka radar system and the Himalayas electronic countermeasure system. The N036 Bielka radar is said to have a range of 400 kilometers but it's not clear what mode it is. It can track up to 60 targets and can engage 16 simultaneously. For reference, the F-35's radar can engage up to 19 targets simultaneously. Interestingly, its radar is set up differently. It has one X-band ASA nose-mounted radar which is tilted to increase stealthiness and there are also two side-facing X-band ASA radars on both sides of the nose. This allows the aircraft to have more angular coverage and execute beaming tactic. This is when an aircraft launches a missile, maneuvers, and flies away from the enemy perpendicularly while still guiding the missile that was launched even without pointing its nose to the target. Now, imagine if this plane has a helmet-mounted queuing system. It would even become much deadlier. There are also radars positioned on the leading edges of the plane for identification friend or foe, and for electronic warfare purposes. There's also one radar integrated within the L402 Himalayas ECM. And the second main system is the Atoll Electro-Optical System which consists of the Infrared Search and Track System, Directional Infrared Countermeasures, Ultraviolet Missile Approach Warning Sensors, Thermal Imager for Low Altitude Flight and Landing, and Navigation and Targeting Pod affecting the radar signature of the aircraft. Armaments The Su-57 has a total of 12 hardpoints, 6 internally and 6 externally. It has one gun, the 30mm Gryaziv Shiponov autocannon, which can burst from 1,500 to 1,800 rounds per minute. It has two tandem main internal weapons bays and two side weapons bays under the fuselage near the wing root where varied missiles can be equipped. These are some of the missiles and bombs that the Su-57 can carry. Its air-to-air -air missiles are 
R-37 missile, an active radar homing Vian visual range air-to-air missile with a range of 150 to 398 kilometers and a speed of Mach 5 to Mach 6. This is designed to destroy tankers, AWACS, and other C-4I star aircrafts. R-77 missile, an active radar homing beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile with a range of 193 kilometers and a max speed of Mach 4 to 5. This is the counterpart of AIM-120 AMRAM. R-73, a short-range air-to-air missile with a range of 40 kilometers and a speed of Mach 2.5. Air-to-surface missiles, KH-38 missile with a range of 40 kilometers and a speed of Mach 2.2. KH-59 cruise missile with a range of 298 kilometers and a speed of Mach 0.72 to 0.88. Anti-ship missiles, KH-35. An anti-ship cruise missile with a range of 300 kilometers and a speed of Mach 1. Combat experience. As we can see, on paper, this fighter jet is a beast fighter. However, why wasn't it seen in the war in Ukraine? The war could have been the perfect time for Russia to have demonstrated the true capabilities of the Su-57, but it wasn't seen there. However, having not seen the aircraft in the war in Ukraine doesn't really mean it wasn't used at all. Take note that this aircraft can just use its standoff missile like the KH-59, which has a range of 298 kilometers, so it doesn't really need to go inside Ukraine or near the Ukrainian air defenses. Reports from local media stated that one Su-57 has taken down one Ukrainian Su-27 using an R-37M missile. However, there was no way this could be proven as Russia's MiG-31s are also using such a missile. In addition, the AWACS operating around the clock in Poland and Romania haven't detected any Su-57. Was it because the Su-57 was too stealthy to be detected, or it wasn't present at all in the area? That is one thing only Russia knows about. Another possible reason why the Su-57 wasn't seen in Ukraine is that maybe because of its numbers. Take note, that there have been only 12 Su-57s manufactured, but two suffered unrecoverable crashes. Currently, although it's not clear, there are 6 to 10 remaining operational Su-57s, so Russia cannot afford to lose more. The production of more Su-57s was greatly affected by the sanctions that Russia received when it annexed Crimea and when it started the war against Ukraine. Orders Initially in 2012, India was interested in buying 214 HAL FGFA variants of Su-57s but later pulled out as they wanted to focus on their own developed fifth-generation fighter, the HAL AMCA. Countries such as Algeria, Iraq, and Vietnam have also shown interest in buying the Su-57. However, with the war that's still going on and with the sanctions that Russia faces, the chances of producing more Su-57s is still nearly impossible. Nevertheless, it can't be denied that on paper, the Su-57 is a formidable fighter and it's not the worst either because of its advanced avionics, high maneuverability, and stealthiness. Other fighters such as the F-22 and F-35 also experience some problems along its production period. It's not yet too late for the engineers to complete the necessary upgrades so that the Su-57 reaches its true potential, therefore unleashing the beast. How effective is this drone that Russia used to attack Ukraine? Check this video out.